Good evening. I call to order the regular meeting of the Mayor and Board of Trustees of the Village of Burr Ridge for Monday, January 25, 2021. <clears throat> I hereby declare <clears throat> that I have determined that an in-person meeting is not practical nor prudent on account of the disaster declaration issued by Governor Pritzker because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for the sake of the nation and the nation under God, indivisible, and with liberty and justice for all. Remind me in the future to make sure all the trustees that are calling in are on mute. Um, okay, roll call, please. Here. Trustee Here. Trustee Here. Trustee Snyder. Here. Trustee Here. Trustee Mata. Here. There are no presentations or public hearings for this evening. That will take us to item four, the consent agenda. <clears throat> All items listed with an asterisk are considered routine by the village board and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a board member or citizen so request, in which event the item will be removed from the consent agenda, discussed by the board, open for public comment, and voted upon during this meeting. <clears throat> Five minutes A, approval of regular board meeting of January 11, 2021. Trustee Francis, please remove. Um, right, the uh, 5A, I'm sorry, Guy, 5A? Yes, uh, Trustee Francis, please remove the meeting minutes. Okay, <clears throat> since people are on remote, let me ask this question at this time. Do any of the trustees want anything else taken off the consent agenda? Are there any members of the public that want anything removed from the consent agenda? They're related, so we'll take them both off. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, so I'll, I'll read the next two. Uh, that will take us to seven resolutions. A, adoption of a resolution regarding construction on state highways. And eight considerations. B, approval of the vendor list dated January 25, 2021 in the amount of $483,502.12 for all funds, plus $407,909.22 for two payroll periods ending December 26, 2020 and January 9, 2021 for a grand total of $891,411.34, which, which, which includes special expenditures of $21,570 and $49,021 to IRMA IRMA Intergovernmental Risk Management Agency for the 2021 insurance contribution. So can I get a motion to approve two items on the consent agenda, item 7A and 7D? So move, Joe Snyder. Second. Trustee Scaffold. Thank you. Uh, roll call, please. Trustee Snyder? Yes. Trustee Schiappa? Yes. Trustee Paveza? Yes. Trustee Mattel? Yes. Trustee Franzese? Yes. Five zero. Five zero. Thank you. <clears throat> Motion passes. That will take us to a five minutes A, approval of regular board meeting of January 11, 2021. Trustee Francise. Yes, thank you, uh, Mayor. Uh, on page 11608, it states that I was present in the boardroom when in fact I was not. I was participating remotely. So okay. if, that could be, if that could be corrected, please. That can be. Any other changes you request? And also on page 11609, 
um, we were having discussion about uh, why uh, certain Burr Ridge employees were, were leaving employment from the village. And I stated that uh, employees typically leave uh, employment, their village employment for uh, three reasons, for better pay, for better benefits, or for a shorter commute. And I would like that to be added to the, to the meeting minutes. Yes, and I do recall that. Uh, thank you. Anything else? That is all. And, and, and with that, I'd like to make a motion to approve the amended meeting minutes for, uh, from January uh, 11th, 2021. Second. Second, Schiappa. Roll call, please. Trustee Francis? Yes. Trustee Schiappa? Yes. Trustee Paveza? Yes. Trustee Snyder? Yes. Trustee Mattal? Yes. Five zero. Five zero. That motion passes. That will take us to six ordinances, C and D. Uh, first of all, um, since they are on there, can I get a motion to combine uh, items six C and six D? So moved. Second, Joe Snyder. Okay. Roll call only to combine the items. Who was? Who made the first note? Oh, okay. um, Schiappa and Schneider. Schneider. Trustee Schiappa? Yes. Trustee Snyder? Yes. Trustee Mattal? Yes. Trustee Francis? Yes. 5-0. 5-0. The motion to combine is approved 5-0. Mark, you want to come up to the podium and introduce yourself and tell us um, anything you wish about those two items? Mark, it's maybe not on, right? There we go. Mark Thomas, 7515 Drew. Um, in reading the ordinance, I have uh, a couple concerns, or actually one concern, um, and that is in section 4B, it says rear yard landscaping, drainage, and fencing shall be provided as per attached plan and subject to uh, approval by the village engineer. And if you look at the attached plan, uh, it says nothing about the size of the trees. So I'm a little concerned about that. Um, and the neighboring property, which we approved a uh, ordinance for at the previous meeting, um, we specified a six foot tall tree uh, with su sufficient uh, girth and a staggered plan in order to fill the space. And uh, with our meeting with Doug, uh, and uh, Dave, we were going to try to standardize all that along there. So I would like to see that verbiage added there. Okay. Anything else? Nope. That's it. Okay. Let me um, let me read it for the record so we know and the public knows what we're talking about. <clears throat> this are the two combined items under six ordinances. C approval of an ordinance granting a special use for a daycare center and for a building addition. Z1420-2708 County Line Road, Guidepost A, LLC, and D, approval of an ordinance granting a variation from the Burr Ridge Zoning Ordinance to permit a reduction in the required eight foot side yard landscaping area, Z1420-2708 County Line Road, Guidepost A, LLC. So, um, can you speak to the tree height? Yes, so I think the suggestion I'd like to make is that the exact verbiage in here does not match the exact verbiage that we had for 7512 County Line Road. And I believe, I'm asking a question here, I believe that you were satisfied with that outcome. On the Western property line, there was a standard tree plan with a drainage plan with a fence that was to be built. Is it simply, would it be fair to say you simply wish to see that plan for the Western property line continued onto this property? Yes. Okay, so we will, I would reflect that the conditions of Ordinance, sorry, I'm scrolling up here. Uh, this ordinance in 6C combined into 6D reflect that the Western property line plan that was present at 7512 County Line Road be continued to the Northern property line at 7508 County Line Road to provide for a secure and orderly Western property line, maintain drainage and trees. That's sufficient with the fences as yeah, well. That would be great. Great, thank you. Do you have that, Madam Clerk? Okay, um, will a uh, trustee make um, a motion to amend <clears throat> the ordinance with that condition added? Well, added question. Yes. 
We'll make the motion first and then we can discuss. Okay, I'll move to amend the ordinance according to <coughs> uh, the language specifying Arbor Vitae to be six feet tall. Okay. Do I have a, do I have a second? second? Trustee Mittal, second. Mittal, second. Now, uh, comment, Trustee uh, this, Schiappa? Was that what, what was agreed upon between the petitioner and us? Well, what, what is agreed to between the petitioner and you is what the conditions you're implying onto this particular petition are. The only addition here is that the, the, the resident is asking for a bit more standardization right. of the Western property line. Right, I understand that, but did, did they, you know, we're at the ordinance level. We were at the consideration before. I mean, this was at the planning commission. So there's quite a bit of right. discussion before we got to this point. So was that discussed with the petitioner at any point? The, I mean, I see they're 10 foot off center, but are they six foot? And that was detailed and just not, it just never hit the ordinance? Or? I, I would say that it, I, I do remember discussion at the plan commission, certainly Mark or Alice, please don't feel like I'm not being complete enough here. But I do remember seeing in the minutes there was some discussion about standardizing the entire property okay. and the block to allow for a better background. Basically what happens is back there, there's a drainage easement or a drainage ditch. And for years it was kind of maintained at will by property owners or the like. And I think what the resident is saying is that he wanted to see more standardization all along the block, which is what would be occurring through my amendment. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, very good, thank you. Okay, and, and there's no reason to believe the petitioner wouldn't agree with this change, correct? Okay. Are there any other questions or comments from any other trustees? Mark, uh, we have your concurrence based on the amendment. Okay, any other comment from any members of the public? Roll call, please. Trustee Schiappa? Yes. Trustee Vital? Yes. Trustee Francis? Yes. Trustee Paveza? Yes. Trustee Snyder? Yes. Thank you. Five zero. The motion passes. That takes care of combined items six C and D. Okay, that takes us back to uh, six ordinances A. Consideration of an ordinance authorizing the disposal of personal property owned by the village of Burr Ridge computer electronic meter equipment. And please note that uh, there was an amendment that was circulated uh, just to correct some of the backup. Uh, but uh, with that, uh, Evan, can you? Explain. Yes, of course, thank you, Mayor. Uh, this is a pretty standard procedure. Uh, municipalities all across the state uh, declare surplus for miscellaneous village material routinely. The only item we'd like to note is that uh, it is state law which requires that the board must pass an ordinance approving the disposal of personal property owned by the village of Burr Ridge. And you'll note, as Mayor had stated, that we simply had a formatting error earlier. It does not reflect the original intent of the ordinance or what we were planning to offer for disposal. <laughs> Uh, we anticipate, frankly, we will get very little money for this type of work or material. Most of it is extremely complicated and or broken. Uh, if we do get any revenue, we're happy for it. But if not, um, we're simply trying to clean out the garage, for lack of a better word. So that's all. Thank you. Okay. With that, can I get a motion to approve an ordinance authorizing the disposal of personal property owned by the Village of Burr Ridge Computer Electronic Meter Equipment? So no moved. Move. Okay, so we got Mattal as movement, Professor as second. Are there any comments by the trustees or any questions by the trustees on this one? Would any member of the public like to address this issue? Roll call, please. Trustee Mattal? Yes. Trustee Paveza? Yes. Trustee Snyder? Yes. Trustee Francis? Yes. Trustee Schiappa? Yes. Five zero. Five zero. The motion passes. That takes us to six B. Consideration of an ordinance adopting a policy regarding the preparation of agendas for village board meetings. Uh, uh, this, Mike, do you want to take this one or Evan? Mike Durkin. Sure. Um, the uh, code provides that uh, the village code provides that the administrator shall prepare an agenda. Uh, for each meeting and um, some questions have arisen regarding uh, how that is carried out 
and this um, policy uh, provides that uh, the mayor, the mayor pro tem, and the administrator will meet, and if a trustee or the mayor wants an item on the agenda, and it does not make that agenda, that if the trustee raises that issue at the subsequent board meeting, and um, the board agrees that that should be added to the next uh, agenda item, uh, you won't actually take a vote on that, but just by discussion, you can tell if there's support for it, then it will be added at a subsequent meeting. So it just adds some formal process to preparing the agenda. And I would like to add that it adds a deadline as well. Seven calendar days prior to the meeting to which the agenda item is proposed to appear. So therefore, if you have a Monday meeting, it is to be submitted by the Monday prior to the meeting to allow for proper preparation and consideration of the item. Yeah, and I'd like to add that uh, Mike, uh, our attorney, Mike Durkin, brought this to my attention and asked uh, that it be if you will, cleaned up. There's been some inconsistencies in prior uh, manners and methods in which uh, agendas were set. There was a policy on our books from all the way back in the 90s when that was generally filed, followed, but not always. And so just for clarity, um, I agreed with Mike that we should have a clean and understandable process. I will say for the record that when it comes to the discussion about if a trustee wants something on the agenda and it's taken up at the meeting, uh, that consensus means, you know, that there's another trustee or even two that want to support it or at least have it discussed. It doesn't require, you know, four people to say they want it on the agenda. It's it just it's some, something more than just one trustee. Um, and uh, so in that sense, if there's one other trustee that wants something on, that's consensus enough for me, at least while I'm mayor, to make sure it gets on the agenda to be discussed. So, so this will clean up the policy and uh, as uh, Evan says, set some uh, time, uh, definite time and, and gives us a clear policy. So with that, can I get a motion to approve an ordinance adopting a policy regarding the preparation of agendas or village board meetings? So move Snyder. Second, Pavesa. Roll call, please. Trustee Snyder. Yes. Trustee Pavesa. Yes. Trustee Mattel. Yes. Trustee Franzese. Yes. Trustee Schiappa. Yes. Five zero. Five zero. The motion passes. I, I should add, I'm sorry, remiss in doing that, but uh, would there be, would there have been, or is there any public comment on the policy regarding the preparation of agendas for village board meetings? Trustee Franzese, I have a comment. Yes, sir. If, if no residents wish to speak first. Go ahead. Uh, I appreciate this additional detail. Uh, I appreciate the additional structure and, and this will further uh, benefit all of the trustees. So we have uh, a cleaner process for addressing uh, agenda items that trustees wish to, wish to focus on. And thank you. Okay, with that, any comment from the public? Okay, then we will move on to considerations 8A, discussion of preliminary fiscal year 2021, general fund year end review. Thank Our, you. Uh, acting finance director, Amy Nelson. All right, um, so in front of you, I think you have my summary that I uh, put together. So tonight's uh, purpose is to give you a snapshot presentation and a brief update of the general fund. Um, over the past few weeks, Evan, Walter, myself, and all the department heads have met and gone through the preliminary revenue projections of how we anticipate the our main general fund operating fund of the village um, will do both revenue-wise and expenditures. <clears throat> so just as everybody will recall at the outset, um, when the, our budget was adopted in April, um, we were kind of obviously in uncertain times and we you know, didn't know what the, you know, bracing ourselves for the financial impact. So we had obviously reduced all of our revenue expenditures, our revenue projections, as well as our expenditures, um, deferred capital projects, delayed salary increases um, to brace ourselves for the unknown. 
And so I'm happy to report tonight after the first preliminary look, it appears that our general fund is a healthy financial picture. And I will walk you through the, the first table summarizing. So in April, when we <laughs> adopted our budget, we had anticipated our revenues would be $8,360,315. And our expenditures would, were projected at $8,324,210 with a surplus of $36,000. So as after our, all of our meetings, we're projecting revenues to come in at $8,776,100, which is 400, over 400,000 surpassing our original projections. And our expenditures coming in at 8,405,200 with an estimated surplus of 300, a little over $370,000. So I'll take you to the next page and just kind of walk you through the revenue um, Evan, if you want to scroll down to the next page, um, kind of give you uh, the details on the revenues by source and where those um, significant revenues um, are coming in at. So the first line is our, our taxes. And the what we're seeing is the biggest impact we're seeing positively is our sales and our use tax. So our sales tax numbers have consistently been increasing since April and May. Those were the lowest um, Hit by the pandemic, but since then we've seen them come in at, at or near where the revenues were last year pre-pandemic. And then in addition, our use tax, which we've consistently seen grow since 2018 when the sales tax laws changed, requiring um, online, you know, online retailers to, to uh, register with the state of Illinois. And also we've seen the consumers just more online sales. So that use tax number has grown significantly up about 70,000 than it that we've budgeted last year. And then of course the intergovernmental line, you'll see $505,000 over what we anticipated. And that's the unbudgeted revenue mm -hmm. that we've received from Cook and DuPage counties um, over $400,000 or right at $400,000 for CARES funding. And we also saw some IRMA grant funding and some other local grants that we've received this year. So those, those two items combined have helped offset um, some of the shortfalls that we've, um, the board approved some license um, rebates um, for business licenses and liquor licenses to help alleviate our businesses. And then we've also just seen overall with some fines and forfeitures down with the courts being closed. And then just the last line I wanted to point out with other, um, it, I wouldn't really call it a shortfall. Um, that line is, you know, typically if we, in years where there's um, revenues that aren't gonna come in or expenditures are higher, we have the ability to pull from insurance reserves from IRMA. Um, there's some excess dollars that are there. And we had originally budgeted to needing to do that, um, thinking that our expenditures would come in higher, um, but we didn't, we don't anticipate needing to do that. And so that's why that shows a, a variance of, a little over 130,000. So jumping down to expenditures, just to highlight, um, just going through with all the department heads, the, the biggest variance is um, overall, we see that um, the general fund expenditures will exceed budget by about $80,000. And that's primarily the central services is the biggest area and that's the board approved tent rental program. That's where those expenditures came out of. Those actually were partially offset by the reimbursements um, from the, you know, the individual businesses that rented the tents. Um, so that was 269,000 over budget. And then police, we see a significant savings right now. And that's primarily the 304,000 we see in police is primarily due to the vacancies with the open patrol officer positions, as well as um, DUCOM rebated our or waived our third quarter or second quarter quarterly dispatching fee, which is $80,000. So that was a significant savings for the police. So overall, the, the items that were, you see a little bit of overage in buildings and grounds, and that's where um, a lot of the disinfectant, PPE, COVID-related expenditures were um, incurred. So this week, um, we are concluding the budget and the other funds for our utility funds, our water sewer fund, um, and all the capital projects funds. So um, right now, we finished the general fund. And you know, even though we've, we see a strong position in the general fund, sometimes after going through those, that exercise with the other funds, it is sometimes necessary if there's a shortfall in funds, general fund 
subsidizes the capital projects funds. Um, so after that, we plan on coming back to the board, possibly with some waitlisted items, if there's still, we still project a, you know, an overage in the general fund um, at a future meeting. And I, the departments have also prepared goals and that will be coming forth in our next February meeting. So that is what I have tonight. Um, I'd be happy to answer questions or turn it over to Evan if he has anything further. Yes, I do. Uh, I, I, I just wanna highlight the work of finance department staff. Um, they've been very hard at work uh, looking at every element of our budget, um, every element of the village's financial position, uh, determining if we need to make anything clearer to make, determine if we need to make uh, any adjustments to how we present things. Um, but overall, just to highlight and attention to detail to making sure that we're tracking data and we're projecting data properly. Uh, to make sure that we're on track for expenditure reductions needed. Um, but I do want to know just how much work they've done just in making sure that we continue to have a very strong financial position on the village side. It's always been the village's position to be conservative in our estimates, both on the revenue and projection side. Um, but I do want to know uh, just how much we've exceeded a lot of our revenues and hit on our expenditure projections in a lot of ways. Um, and I think that's a big credit to the finance staff and the work that they've done. Uh, over the past year and continuing to go forward in this current budget cycle. Uh, I do want to reiterate uh, the upcoming schedule again, um, because we have a projected revenue surplus right now, we are planning to bring back a revised list of waitlisted items for consideration at the end of the year. We have some important goals we'd like for you to consider. Um, we look forward to working with our department head and our senior staff to make sure that we have uh, more quality services to offer the residents and the businesses of our community. Um, if there are any questions, I would ask you directly to Amy. She's been really diving deep into these numbers um, and has been the driving force in making sure that we have a very detailed budget report for you today. Amy also did a great job on a December monthly general fund report that she put out last Friday via the MISC memo. She's put out quite a bit of financial information for your consumption over the past week or so. But again, I would ask that you yield your questions to her as she's done the bulk of the work on this particular item. Thank you. Okay, um, thank you, Amy. Uh, let's see, uh, uh, do any of the trustees have any questions or comments? This is Paveza. I, uh, I, earlier today, I was taking a lot of time in reviewing the numbers and I was pleasantly surprised to see that we're in better financial shape than I thought we were. And I think that's a credit to the staff. Uh, this is Trustee Mittal. Um, I want to say uh, congratulations to the police and the public work department because they did a lot of cost cutting and uh, thanks to them, we have a balanced budget. Anyone else? Yes, Tony? I want to thank Amy for, and the finance department for all this work and keeping us up abreast of what's going on financially. Um, and uh, I think a lot of it had to do with the fact that we kept ahead of some of the other villages and uh, putting the tent program together and keeping our businesses alive in, in Burr Ridge. Uh, but my, the only question I have is, uh, you know, I know none of us have a crystal ball, but you know, what, what are we hearing regarding the COVID exposure, the vaccine and how are we getting, you know, when do we think we're going to get back to normal? I know we, know we can't answer it specifically now, but I don't know if you've heard yeah. any. So I've heard a lot, like everybody else, and I'll, I'll answer that question now. Um, and I'll probably have another comment at okay. reports and communications. But um, uh, two, two main things. No, number one, the biggest thing is that the governor uh, has uh, moved the 1B to include 65 year olds and older. I think that's well known at this point. Uh, and that is principally because um, uh, it was also found that in um, some of the minority groups, uh, blacks and uh, Latinx, uh, the um, average age of death from this virus is significantly less than the other parts of the population. Um, and so he didn't feel it was, uh, I, I presume he didn't feel it was equitable to have one B start at 75 years old and up and lowered it to 65. Some of us are very glad for that. Um, many, many people are glad for that. So that's starting. I was on, today is Monday. I was on the Monday uh, mayor's call. I believe uh, Evan was on too with DuPage mayors with the DuPage Board of Health that has the weekly calls. Um, and they were uh, telling us about their 
all their efforts to get uh, people vaccinated. But um, the truth is what you hear on TV. Uh, they are looking for, uh, for as much vaccine as possible. Um, you know, people are complaining about the federal government, but others are saying, look, the federal government got it started earlier than anybody expected. I don't think anybody, certainly in my age group, 65 and older, was expecting to be able to get a vaccination in January or the first part of February. And yet that's becoming a reality in Illinois and apparently around the country. However, uh, only about 1.62%, uh, if I remember the numbers from this afternoon, uh, from this morning, uh, of the uh, of people in Illinois have been able to be vaccinated. And that's about what's happening around the country. Only one to 2% of the people so far, but the frontline people and the older people. And so it's being prioritized in that sense. Uh, as many of you know, uh, Metropolitan Infectious Disease Consultants right here in Burr Ridge somehow has been able to get a vaccine. Uh, and on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, they can do Pfizer shots. And on Tuesdays and Thursdays, they can do Moderna. The only difference there is that there's a three-week uh, interval for Pfizer, four-week interval for Moderna. So depending on how your schedule is, maybe you can get in there and see them. They are overwhelmed. Uh, I've gotten a number of uh, emails saying, Mayor, thanks a lot for the information, but I can't get through. Um, <clears throat> and I just keep uh, telling people to uh, continue to uh, try. Um, as of today, um, first of all, they went and set up a separate phone line and then started to hire extra staff to take the calls. And as of today, they're taking applications over through an email. It's um, vaccine at... Uh, M-I-D-C-U-S-A.com. Uh, in my mayor's message today, I revised the message to include that uh, email in it. Hopefully that will be better. But uh, Burr Ridge generally is in very good shape because of metropolitan infectious disease um, consultants. We can get uh, hopefully vaccines there. So uh, those uh, over 65 in the Burr Ridge area, Teachers, child care workers, police, fire, EMS workers. Those are the ones getting priority right now. Great. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments or questions from any of the trustees? Any comments or questions about the, um, about the fiscal year report we just heard from any of the members of the public? This is Trustee Franzese. I have a comment if none of the residents have a comment. Right. First, whoever calls in, we'll, and we'll put them up next. I wanted to thank uh, the finance department and also commend the finance department for their hard work. You think back to last spring when we, when we had a budget in place back in February and March, and then we essentially tossed that budget out the window and started all over and, and, and from scratch and, and went through and looked at each line item and, and determined what's the realistic revenue, what's the realistic cost, uh, in this pandemic that we're that we we're soon embarking on, and and a lot of hard work went into revising that budget, so we had something that was workable, and and we went back and revisited it periodically uh, during the spring and the summer and the fall, and the result of that hard work is is uh, is this surplus that we're seeing, and hopefully we can take some of those waitlist items, and and execute those items, uh, perform those items, so that we can get back on track to where we had envisioned we would be a year ago. So thank you, staff. Appreciate it. Anyone else? Just let me finish up by saying I, I totally agree with what uh, Trustee Francis just said. I took the words somewhat out of my mouth, which is fine. Um, I recall the days in March and April when a Guy and I were on the phone every day, twice a day in the beginning, to making sure not only people were safe in the village, but um, making sure the finances of the villages were uh, was being watched, uh, given the facts that we knew were happening. And so uh, the good hard work that you and the rest of the finance department uh, did uh, in March, in April, in May uh, is, is being reflected here today. So um, this just didn't come out of the blue. Um, the finance department uh, worked very hard at the beginning of this pandemic, and you're seeing the results of that right now. So. Thank you on behalf of the village. Okay. Um, Snyder, yes, I would like sir. to concur with the rest of the troops. 
Amy in the finance department, as well as staff. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. You guys don't get enough uh, pat on the back. So thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, snow's still coming down. So let's move on to the next issue. <clears throat> that is 8B, consideration of purchase of police vehicles through the Sorry, did we have we need to, to vote? No vote. No, no vote on this. It was just a discussion. I'm sorry. All right. Um, it was just a discussion. So 8B again, uh, consideration of purchase of police vehicles through the village's established fleet management agreement. Evan. Thank you, Mayor. So as staff, or, or, I'm sorry, the board rule will call, uh, the village entered into a leasing agreement with Enterprise Fleet Management on October 25th, 2020. Uh, this is a basic agreement which allows for a leasing perspective instead of a purchasing perspective for fleet replacement needs, primarily public works and police vehicles. Um, on that same date, the board approved uh, a number of purchases of vehicles, which amounted to are about $95,000. And again, purchases, I mean leases, but we use them interchangeably here. Uh, these were again ordered in October 2020 and are expected later this spring. Uh, staff is coming back to uh, request consideration of leasing four additional Chevy Tahoes for the police department to be delivered in fiscal year 21-22. Now, this is coming to you ahead of where we think the budget may be in terms of its preparation for public uh, consumption. However, we have been told by Enterprise that if we do not order these tonight, we will be delayed for three to six months in purchasing these vehicles. So again, if we move any time by five sides tonight, there is a real chance, in fact, a surety that the village will be in delayed three to six additional months in obtaining these vehicles. The police department's vehicles have already been delayed a year due to the pandemic. That was one of the cost adjustments that we had made was to delay capital purchases. However, these things, these vehicles in particular are over 100,000 miles. They are definitely at the end of their end of their useful life and in fact have exceeded them uh, full stop. Um, so I am recommending in addition to Acting Finance Director Nelson, as well as Deputy Police Chief, uh, who's here tonight in place of Chief Madden, uh, that the village continue with our leasing program, leasing four additional Chevy Tahoes the total fiscal year impact of $60,036.88. And again, just to give you an idea of how long it takes to get these things from the factory, if we order them tonight, we expect them to arrive in October. So they are very backed up. There are a lot of issues in the supply chain right now with microprocessors, with plastics, with getting enough workers in line. So every day that we delay would mean a delay in getting the vehicles that our police department needs. I do also want to note that for less than it would cost to purchase Explorers. We're getting larger cars that are safer and better for our officers. Uh, again, we've had a lot of feedback from our sworn officers. They prefer these larger cars. They are bigger. They're easier to have a second officer in the car if needed. The Explorer is simply too small to accommodate both two officers and a computer and all the equipment they need, as well as these things simply being larger and more visible, thus being safer for our officers and the people they interact with in the public. So again, this is a $60,000 item in general terms. These costs will be reflected when the vehicles arrive in October, 2021. And again, these are leases, these are not purchases. These are monthly lease charges that we will be making to lease these vehicles to Enterprise Rent-A-Car. When at the end of the day that we feel like these things have exceeded or have reaching, they reach an optimal point of value, we would return them back to Enterprise and get credit for the balance of the vehicle. So again, this is a cost savings by entering into these programs. Um, this is also an urgent need to both replace vehicles that are already out of service, but also uh, would be significantly delayed if we did not order this evening. Thank you. Okay. Um, anybody um, have any comments on this? I think it's um, this would normally be on a <clears throat> consent agenda, but I wanted to make sure we had some discussion about it tonight. Um, Deputy Chief, you're here. Anything you want to add? Thank you. Um, this is Trustee Snyder. Yes, sir. We've we've reviewed this in the past. So with Evan and the finance department, Amy, et cetera, coming forward to give us a six month ahead of time, we don't want our officers in any kind of jeopardy. If the, if the vehicles are right at the end of the rainbow, then my vote or I'd like to make a motion to move forward on this. Yeah. Um, I, do you need a motion as such? Yes, we you do. Okay, so we have a motion. Second it. Okay. Mitel, second Mitel. Schneider and Mitel, this is a motion to uh, purchase uh, police vehicles through the Village Established Fleet Management Agreement. 
I have a motion and a second. Is there, are there any comments from any of the trustees? Are there any comments from the public? Roll call, please. Trustee Snyder? Yes. Trustee Mattel? Yes. Trustee Francis? Yes. Trustee Schiappa? Yes. Trustee Preveza? Yes. Five zero. Five zero, the motion passes. That takes us to uh, item HC, discussion of development at uh, 9476 mm -hmm. Falling Water Drive. I will take this one first. <clears throat> I'm gonna read something long and that it was reported uh, to all of the trustees. Following the CBS News story about a home construction in Falling Water, I asked Evan to provide me with a detailed summary of the facts as we know them. I'm sure it's possible that the samples who are uh, Mr. And Mrs., Dr. and Mrs. Sample, who are the homeowners and people constructing this home, and the Falling Water Homeowners Association or its management may not agree with all of them as I set them forth here. But here's what I know. This house const uh, construction project predates my 2019 election, so some history is included. The owners are the samples, uh, and Mrs. Sample is the builder. She apparently is very experienced at building and has uh, lots of uh, uh, credentials to do so. Most interaction has apparently been between Mrs. Sample and the HOA management, specifically Ms. Donovan, who uh, is the HOA management representative to Falling Water. The village's domain, what we are responsible for in such projects is zoning, grading, engineering, and code compliance. The HOA's domain is architectural approval, landscaping, and gate security in relation to the project. <clears throat> On March 28, 2018, staff received a permit application for a new home at the subject property, 9476 Falling Water. The permit was twice denied on a zoning basis as there were setback issues on the front and side yards in both the first and second review. The first denial also was due to a documented case of loose aggregate that was present in the buildable area which necessitated a different engineering approach to the property. All reviews by the village were performed and returned in writing within the initial 14 day period, 14 business day period, and subsequent 10 day review time uh, and, and subsequently 10 business day review uh, timeliness. Um, on July 5, 2018, the village approved the permit. All inspections requested by the property owner after permit issuance has been performed on a next day or as requested basis consistent with village policy. In August 2018, staff received a forwarded email from then Mayor Mickey Straub that he had received from the homeowners expressing frustration with falling water HOA because of the HOA's architectural committee uh, it had not uh, yet approved the plans. The email stated that the samples experience with the village was quote, straightforward and painless, unquote, and that the initial changes and, and, and the initial challenges were with the HOA. Evan responded to Dr. Sample and later met over breakfast with him to address the HOA issues referenced. Dr. Sample accused the HOA's architectural chair and the HOA of slowing down the project due to his race. Further investigation revealed that the HOA was waiting on final details from the samples related to roof shingles, landscaping, and the payment of the deposit that was to be placed with the HOA to protect against HOA property damage throughout construction. HOAs have a long established power to perform these site reviews this HOA review process would occur in other similar HOA uh, developments such as Savoy Club, for example, Burridge Club, et cetera, around the village. When the samples met these three requirements, the HOA promptly approved their plans. In November, 2019, over a year later, the village staff discovered that work performed 
without properly stamped plans backed up by a valid architectural seal on file was uh, going on. The village requires by ordinance that all plans for new home development be affixed with a valid architectural seal to guarantee that someone is accepting the professional responsibility of the constructed matter or the building. Apparently the samples architect had recently retired and moved away and there was some delay in retaining a new architect who could certify and take responsibility for work being performed. The village therefore issued a stop work order until a qualified architect was retained. The village also needed a current list of contractors and their related licenses submitted to staff. Mrs. Sample eventually provided this information with a new architect on board and the stop work order was lifted at no charge to the samples, normally a $300 fee. Around the 2019-2020 new year, there were contractor payment issues and requests from the samples to use their village bond to pay those contractors, an unpermitted action that the samples eventually rectified without village involvement. In the summer of 2020, staff was notified of several site issues, including a lack of construction fencing as well as large brick pallets that were in the street potentially endangering traffic due to the property's location near a blind hill. The village issued another stop work order, which required that the outside conditions had to be completed before interior work could be done. I might be, uh, may have misstated that. It might've been the HOA that listed, that issued that um, stop work order, which they're allowed to do. There were claims that the stop work order uh, being, uh, was removed physically twice uh, from the structure. You know, they are posted on the structure and they were supposedly removed mm -hmm. without permission. And a dispute arose between the HOA management and Mrs. Sample over prioritizing of work outside before any interior. Uh, leading to the HOA management denying entry to contractors who were there to perform interior work. The rules required that the exterior work be finished first before interior work could be performed. The samples were uh, trying to have the interior work done either at the same time or before, and that led to um, the HOA stopping uh, interior carpenters and those types of people from coming uh, into uh, falling water. <clears throat> the fencing uh, remained an issue as, as was a general cleanup of the site during this time. The village became aware of the work gate dispute. Consequently, the village and the HOA, HOA held meetings to communicate the needs and issues related to gate entry with the samples. From the village's perspective, it appeared that neither the HOA nor the HOA management company had any desire to unnecessarily inhibit work if there was a reasonable attempt that the samples were complying or attempting to comply with both village and HOA regulations. <clears throat> the samples did later correct the site problems and paid the standard $300 fee to have the second uh, stop work order lifted. In November, 2020, village staff all be also became aware <clears throat> that the sample's original permit issued in 2018 had been in effect for more than two years. Village ordinance requires 90 day permit extensions equal to a percentage of the original building uh, permit fee if the home is not substantially complete after two years. Also precluding the property owner from completing interior work so long as the outdoor areas are not completed and the home has healed. In the case of the samples, the 90-day extension would have cost approximately $5,000. Staff extended the samples a 30-day permit extension at no cost in acknowledgement that the samples were, in fact, working to clean and secure their property under the order uh, uh, consistent with the stop work order. <clears throat> I lost my place, give me, a, give me a second. I have spoken with the HOA president and separately with Dr. Sample. 
I assured Dr. Sample that after my review of the facts from what was available to the village, there was no animosity to be ascribed to the stop work orders or the denial of gate entrance to workers. There was a disagreement over process and whether the samples were following the requirements. Amongst other things, I told Dr. Sample that Burr Ridge is a highly diverse community with successful persons from all around the world calling Burr Ridge home and hoped he and his wife would make their home in Burr Ridge. I asked uh, Dr. Sample uh, or his wife or the HOA uh, president or HOA management to comment if they wanted to. I don't believe anybody has indicated they wanted to make a further comment. As far as I'm concerned, the issue is closed and I believe uh, everybody is uh, reasonably uh, satisfied at this point. However, if I find anything to the contrary, I will bring it to the attention of the board and to the public. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions? No. All right, uh, then that takes us uh, to item nine, which is public comment. Is there anyone uh, in the audience or on the phone or on Zoom that wishes to have uh, or make public comment? Okay, no public comment. That takes us to 10, reports and communications from village officials. You mind if I go? Yes, you wanna go first, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, I just wanna make a quick note. I wanna welcome two new hires in public works. One has started, one will be starting soon. I wanna welcome back actually, Mr. Mike Wolfram. Uh, Mike was a part-time employee who was with us for about a year, um, almost a year, uh, about a year ago. Um, uh, Mr. Wolfram performed highly uh, during his initial time here, left to find a full-time job in another community uh, when no full-time work was available. But uh, upon learning that full-time work was available back in Burr Ridge, he promptly uh, applied for the job and was hired. So we're very happy to have Mr. Wolfram back. Uh, he'll be working in the Streets and Operations Division under Mr. Ornamont. We're very excited to have Mr. Wolfram back. Um, I'd also like to welcome, uh, pending a uh, hire date in February, Mr. Anthony Skepperdine. Um, Mr. Scapperdine uh, is coming to us from the village of Schaumburg. Um, Anthony currently works as a winter laborer for the village of Schaumburg, but comes very highly recommended. Um, he will be working in our water division. Uh, you might see him digging a hole or uh, wrenching down a, a water main break here in the next few months. Uh, but he came uh, with background both on the public side as well as a plumbing side as a leak repair specialist. He's also CDL certified, and we're very excited to have his, his skills and his experience here for the village of Burr Ridge. I also want to compliment Dave Pricing. Dave is uh, something of our HR department source. Dave Source is the best employees around. Uh, so we're very excited to have those employees start and we're looking forward to seeing them out on the streets here soon. So thanks again, Dave, for all of your effort. Uh, we always appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, any trustees have any reports or communications? Okay, I have a few. Um, Starting with um, an appointment I made on uh, January 20th. On January 20th, in accordance with section 4-2 of the Liquor Control Act of 1934, which is 235 ILCS 54-2 and section 25.9 of the Burr Ridge Village Code, I designated trustee Antonio Schiappa, Tony Schiappa, to serve as the local liquor control commissioner for the village of Burr Ridge until further notice. I also wanna now thank again, Dr. Petrak and his staff at MIDC for making the COVID-19 vaccine available for first responders and uh, teachers, uh, in, as well as Burr Ridge residents over the age of 65. As I stated before, the phones at uh, MIDC have become overloaded and uh, they are now relying on a, an email address uh, for you to uh, write an email, uh, put in the name or names of people in your family that, you, uh, that are eligible to receive vaccines, give your date of birth and, and address. Uh, that email address again is vaccine 
at midcusa.com. We're hoping that that makes things uh, smoother than they've been in the last couple of days. Next, the Burr Ridge Willowbrook Little League is planning to return for the 2021 season. That's good news. Um, uh, hard as they've tried, COVID-19 did not permit them to play last season. Registration, however, is now open for the 2021 season. The Village of Burr Ridge is proud to be a sponsor of our Little League program. Anyone interested in registering to play, to coach, or to sponsor a team can contact the Burr Ridge Park District. They are happy to partner with businesses in the area. Uh, next, a, contact, a contest was held among Burr Ridge school-aged uh, kids to design a poster reminding people of COVID-19 safety guidelines. Wear a mask, wash your hands, socially distance six feet apart. The entries were categorized by age groups. I'm happy to announce that our winners are Matthew Galinsky, age 10, and Anastasia Galinsky, age 15. Same family, I bet. Uh, they will each receive a $25 Falco's pizza gift card and a box of face masks. We thank our contestants for participating and congratulate our winners. The winning posters will be on display in the village hall lobby for the next couple of months. For those of you who can see, here is Anastasia's fine artwork, prize winning. And here is... Matthews, that's pretty good, that's pretty, pretty good, pretty good stuff. So thank you again uh, and congratulate uh, Anastasia and Matthew as our winners. Um, let's see, um, I asked uh, Chief Madden to be available tonight uh, to discuss the 2020 uh, crime statistics. He's had a personal matter. Uh, and so he asked uh, to make his presentation at the next board meeting on February Eighth, and so uh, look forward to that uh, review uh, on February eighth. Uh, and finally, um, it's a pleasure to have a calm, orderly, professional board meeting. Can I get a motion to adjourn to February eighth, twenty twenty one, at seven p.m.? So moved, Snyder. And Roll call, please, because it's still Zoom rules. Uh, Trustee Snyder? Yes. Who, who seconded the motion? There were two. Mattel. Okay. Um, Trustee Mattel? Yes. Trustee Francis? Yes. Trustee Chiappa? Yes. Trustee Paveza? Yes. Five zero. Five zero. The motion passes. We are adjourned to February 8th.